Flatland, a romance of many dimensions, condensed narration. I am a humble square, dwelling in the vast and endless plain we call Flatland, a realm of only length and breadth, where height is but a dream beyond all imagining. Our society is ordered with precision, women, mere lines, swift but perilous, the lowest men, isosceles triangles, the respectable middle, squares and pentagons, the noble circles, perfect in form, who govern us all. In this world, we see not as you do, with the gift of depth, but discern one another by the subtlest changes of angle and the faint touch of an edge in the darkness. All is fixed, proper, and unquestioned. Yet one night, I dreamt of a strange kingdom, Wineland. There the inhabitants were points upon a single line, moving only forward and back. When I spoke to their king of turning, sideways, he deemed me mad, for to him no such direction existed. Awakening, I was visited by a most extraordinary stranger, a sphere, who declared himself a native of Spaceland, a world of three dimensions. His words confounded me. What is, height, to one who knows only length and breadth? I thought him a trickster. But the sphere, impatient with my ignorance, seized me and lifted me above the plain. Then did all the truth burst upon me. I beheld the interiors of houses, the hidden sides of my fellow shapes, a vision wondrous and terrible. A new direction, a new reality, was mine to comprehend. Eagerly I sought to extend this revelation. If there is a third dimension, I asked, why not a fourth? But the sphere grew stern and mocked my inquiry, for even the enlightened may scorn the heights above them. Returned to my native land, I strove to instruct my brethren, but their minds were closed as Lineland's king had been to me. My words were met with laughter, then with wrath. The priests, fearing the collapse of our order, cast me into prison. Here I remain, penning this account, in hope that some future soul may escape the tyranny of flat perception. For there is always another dimension, though we cannot yet conceive it, waiting beyond the narrow bounds of our sight.